Alright, so welcome back. Um, so in this video, I'll be covering initializers, so designated and convenience. Um, so to get started, uh, I'm basically just going to read this off to you, but you should probably write this down. This is kind of what helps me when I'm working with classes and initializers and, and whatnot. So basically, initializers, all initializers, follow three basic steps. First is to initialize any instance variables created by the class, your class, to a default starting state. So that's what every initializer does. So always keep that in mind when you're working with them. Second, um, call the superclass if it exists to initialize its instance variables. So basically it ensures that the class storage, oops, I misspelled class, so that the class storage, gosh, I am not bad spell today. So that the class storage is consistent across all levels. So that's if we, if our class is a, um, no, a superclass or a subclass, I should say, it will call the superclass and it'll initialize all its instance variables as well. Um, and then third, perform any other setup duties, if any, required by your instance. So here is where um, it will override any inherited properties. I think it's spelled inherited correctly. And call methods and then freely refer to self as a value. All right, so keep that in mind. I will refer back to these three basic steps as I go through this, this video. All right, so what is a designated initializer? So basically a designated initializer, they are responsible for initializing all properties in a class. They are the primary initializers and require all values to be sent in for each property. So you have to do the hard work. <laughs> you have to tell it, hey, what is my values? How am I initializing this? So let's go ahead and um, play around with this. So the basic syntax course is class, and I'm just gonna call this just basic default generic class. <laughs> So this is class, root class. So this is going to be the, a super class. It's not inheriting anything. We do our curly brackets. And this class is going to just have one variable called a. And a is an integer. And now what I have to do is, uh, if we look at our lovely error, it's probably telling us that we need to initialize it. Yeah, so this is class, root class, has no initializers. So we need to initialize A. So this is what this first step it's, it's, it's referring to is initialize any instance variables created by your class to a default starting state. So that's why it's airing out because we haven't set a default starting state. Now I could solve this by saying A equals four and that works too. So basically I can set it to, you know, a, <laughs> a value and that will erase that error. But say we don't want to make this, you know, a, a four. We want to be able to add whatever number we want in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So how we do that is we create a designated initializer. I'm just going to type this in there. And that syntax is init, I-N-I-T. And then we call in our, our variable. So we do A and we tell it that it's an integer. We do our curly brackets and we tell it self A equals A. And this should satisfy the error and it did. So this is the basic syntax for a designated initializer. And so what happens when we um, work with this class, what we'll have to do, because we didn't set it to a, uh, a constant, like remember before where I added equals four up here, uh, we have to give it a value. We have to send in something. So let, let's go ahead and do that. So let's create an instance, I'm gonna say var my wonderful new instance and this is equal to the root class 
So I do root class. We do it in our parentheses. And if you see, it's already providing us the syntax to bring in a value. So this is what I was talking about before, where um, destiny initializers require a value to be sent in for each property. So if I had like six other properties in this root class, I would have to send in a value for each of them each six of them. <laughs> but I only have one, so I'm going to send in five. If you see that wonderful error, it was like flipping out. <laughs> so yeah, that is that is the error that occurs when you don't send in a value. Okay, well, let's look at it again. So uh, when we see this, we see, okay, use of unresolved identifier. Now that doesn't really help us any, but if we go back and look at our basic steps, we can say, okay, how does this error apply? Well, we haven't initialized all the instance variables to the default starting state. Well, we did, but now that we're initializing, that we're actually using it, we need to send in something because we're using a designated initializer, which requires you send in a value. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and do another example. Um, actually, wait, let's see what our instance has. <laughs> be nice to see what all that work was for. So let's go ahead and print out our, um, um, our new variable, my wonderful instance. And then I'm going to say um, the, var or the value or the property, which is A, and it's 4. If we look down here, and I think if we scroll over, yeah, we can see it prints out 4. All right, so there we go. We created a new instance and gave the value of 4. Now I can always change those, so I can change this to 5. I don't really have 5. Or what I can do is I can just like completely create another instance of this and rename it to, and give it the value of 3. And you can see that, yeah, it all works, as long as you give it a value. So that's the thing about designated initializers. You have to send in a value, otherwise it will freak out. Gotcha. All right. So let's do another example. So in this example, let's do a person. So I'm going to create a superclass person. And this person is, of course, going to have a name because it would be nice if they had one. And so this is the first property. It's just going to be string. And then the second property is going to be age, because we want to know the age of said person. I'm just doing integer. I mean, you could definitely do a float or something, but I'm just going to make this easy on myself. All right, so since I didn't set any default values for these properties, it's giving me an error. And that error is, hey, it has no initializer. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to do another designated initializer. So int, int, int. And we have to, of course, bring in our two properties that we need to initialize. And the first one is name, and that's a string. And the second one is age, and that's an int. Into the curly brackets. And then we have to do self name equals name, self age equals age. All right. So we've set this up exactly like this. And let's go ahead and create an instance. And then I'm going to do a let a person equal a person. And we have to send in, of course, a name and an age. So we'll do Dave. And the person's age is going to be 30. All right. So there we go. We create an instance. And now this is where I'm actually going to bring in a different, I'm actually going to introduce a convenience. So a convenience initializer. All right. So a convenience initializer, initializer basically provides um, a second, secondary kind of 
utility or construction. So basically it helps out with providing a value. Um, that doesn't require a manual input. So you can add an input, you don't have to, it will catch it so that if you don't add that value, it will pop it in. Now, a good example of when this would be helpful or when to use one is say for something like, um, if we were creating an app that, you know, say a to-do app and we're gonna add um, a property that has the timestamp. Now, say for example, you could have the user type in a timestamp if they want to, um, like say for the future or whatever, or maybe the past if they travel through time. But, <laughs> but say for example, um, you want the timestamp to be set, you know, if the user doesn't set it. So that's one example of when you would use a convenience initializer. In this case, I'm going to uh, do a convenience initializer that um, will set, I don't know, I guess the name or the age. Uh, let's see, I haven't decided. So let's do convenience. So that's how you set convenience initializer. It's just type in a word convenience in front of it. Int, I-N-T. I N I P and then you just bring in the name. String and then do self init. So this is the syntax to set an initializer. We do name name. So and then we can set the age. So I'm gonna do age equals BT. All right, so let's, let's, uh, so if you notice, we didn't get any error from our last instance that we created because it's okay that we bring in the age. It's not, you know, we're not setting this to a default value or anything. We're just saying if the user doesn't put in something, then we will use the convenience initializer to set the missing value. So let's do ahead and do person. And if you notice, we have two options. We can do just enter a name, or we can enter the name and the age. So let's just do this one. Now let's say John. All right. And then if we, I'm gonna go ahead and print this. Uh, so if I print the person, this person. <laughs> so we got to tell it, okay, which one. So uh, I want to see what the age is because I didn't set the age. And there we go, the age is 18. So if you notice the, since we didn't bring in anything, our class said, okay, well, there's no value for age. So I'm going to jump down to the convenience initializer and set it that way to satisfy my default state. All right. So <clears throat> Since we already set this con convenience initializer, let's go ahead and set another one so that we kind of explore how this kind of works. So let's do um, convenience initializer. And this time, I'm not going to bring in anything. I'm going to have, I'm going to tell this class, hey, if nothing's brought in, this is what you need to do. <laughs> so we do self init. And so the last thing that we need to do is set a value for name. So do name and I'm just going to do Cartman. And yes, yeah, so that was a South Park reference. <laughs> All right, so we have a, a, a convenience initializer that also sets the name. Um, now, if you're wondering, well, why don't you just set it up here? Well, that's the thing. I kind of want to show you that you can set convenience initializers for everything, all your properties if you wanted to. But in most instances, you wouldn't need to. I'm just showing you that this is how it works. So let's create a C person. And we're just gonna set it to person. Now if you notice, there's no error. Now if I, back, if I backtrack here, I'm gonna write that without closing out that parentheses. We see we have three options now. 
We can provide the name and the age. We can just provide the name or we can provide nothing at all. And this would satisfy this class's initializers. So in this case, there's no error. And then if we go ahead and print out, um, let's, yeah, let's do this. Let's print out the name. Gosh, I'm not, I don't understand why that does that. C person name. I'm just going to copy this. Oops. And then go ahead and print that out and change name to age. Let's go look at the age too. All right, so there we go. We see that the name has been brought in as well as the age. So it's the first thing it realizes is, hey, I don't have anything. So I'm gonna look at this, go to this initializer and set the name. And then it realizes, hey, I don't have the age. So I'm gonna look at this convenience initializer and set the age. Because once it realizes, hey, I, I don't have the info, <laughs> it will just jump to the next initializer that um, can be applied. So that's another thing I kind of wanted to make note here is that convenience initializers must delegate to another convenience initializer or to a designated initializer. So it always backtracks. It always delegates to another initializer. Um, and in the end, if there is another convenience initializer, then it delegates to a designated initializer. All right, so that is going to be actually the end of this video, introducing um, initializers. Um, I will provide uh, another video where we can explore this further in subclasses, because that's where it actually gets really interesting and I can definitely go into more detail about how um, convenience initializers delegate and how that applies to superclasses or subclasses and superclasses. Um, so if this video at all was helpful to you, then I definitely like it. Um, and again, please make sure you write down <laughs> the initializers, follow these basic steps because it will help you kind of understand why it does certain things. All right, so in this video, okay, I covered designated initializers, kind of playing around with that, as well as convenience initializers. All right, if this video has helped you at all or any of my videos, you know, definitely subscribe. Until then, quote on my friends.